morning. We are uh, very glad that you are gathered with us this morning. Our service will come from the Book of Common Prayer, um, the order for morning prayer. The Lord is risen indeed. Thanks be to God, which give us, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that he would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall shall be, world without end. O oh, praise our God, you peoples, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, who holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to slip. For thou, O oh God, hast proved us, thou also hast tried us, like as silver is tried. Thou didst bring us into the snare, and didst lay trouble upon our loins. Thou didst suffer men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but thou didst bring us out into a place of freedom. I will go into thine house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows, which I promised with my lips and spake with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer unto thee fat burnt sacrifices with the incense of rams 
I will offer bullocks and goats. O come hither and hearken, all ye that fear God, and I will tell you what he hath done for my soul. I called unto him with my mouth, and gave him praises with my tongue. If I had regarded wickedness in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But verily, God hath heard me, and considered the voice of my prayer. We'll be seated for the reading. The first lesson is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defence to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet you do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that, when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Here end of the lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thy honorable, true, and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name, ever a world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. 
let me never be confounded. The second lesson is taken from John's Gospel. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in with you. I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them, and reveal myself to them. Here endeth the lesson. We'll read the Benedictus together, responsibly by the half. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. And hath raised up a mighty salvation for us. In the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies. And from the hands of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called prophet of the Most High. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people. For the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God. Whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. And, and to guide our, our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, from whom all good things do come, grant to us, thy humble servants, that by thy holy inspiration we may think those things that be good, and by thy merciful guiding may perform the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same by thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. I speak to you this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to welcome you into my home. It's a bit unusual, I suppose, to not be in the church, but in, in fact, uh, in years gone by, on this particular Sunday, it was not unusual for me to be out on some farm somewhere, blessing the young animals and the seeds for the planting. So it, that would have been Rogation Sunday. Now, the readings for today that I've selected uh, to combine are from Peter 3, 1, uh, 13. Uh, they, no one can hurt you if you do what is right. And from John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And then also from Acts 17, 22 to 31, in which Paul spoke of the true God and of the resurrection. Now, in my reading of these, it reminded me of the days when I was doing uh, confirmation lessons, and in that I would rely on three particular sentences, that we should believe what is true, that we should speak what is right, which we might also put down as speak the truth with care or kindness, and thirdly, to do what is good. Now, if we look at each of those, first, to believe what is true. First of all, that God is the one true God and the creator, as we understand from the commandments, and that we believe that God's love is also true, as demonstrated for us in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the the uh, evidence given of that through the people on the road to Emmaus and the people who were gathered in the upper room and those who were present at the seaside for breakfast. These occasions remind us of God's love through the resurrection. We also think of the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is to strengthen us and to provide enlightenment for us. 
Now, we, we have to wonder these days with the information that we have about what is true and what is not true. There have always been people who have been trying to scam others, but this seems to be particularly difficult these days where the internet provides so much misinformation and disinformation. It means that we have to be very wary in looking to see what is true outside of what we understand about the one true God and his work for us. Now, if we look at, at the next item, speaking what is right or speaking the truth with care or sensitivity or kindness, we, we may wonder, well, how do we do this? There are many times when we often feel ourselves at a loss for words, especially at very difficult times in our lives and in the lives of other people. It's not unusual, I think, uh, in my life to have thought uh, when someone else had said something that I wish I had thought of that, and uh, or I wish I had said that, because I, I, I such as you probably are, feel somewhat inadequate at certain times when it comes to speaking what is right. We also, when we come to speaking what is right, have to r realize that there are lies available, there is misinformation and disinformation, and that we want to eradicate those from our own speaking. It means that we have to assess very carefully what we see and hear, what we read, what we take in as information, so that when we, in our turn, repeat things, we repeat, repeat only what is true. And thirdly, we come to the item of doing what is good. And we begin by thinking about prayer. Prayer is one of the best things we can do when we pray for ourselves and we pray for others, and we pray in thanksgiving and not forgetting to confess that at times we err from our right way. We also think in goodness of doing what we should for our neighbour. We, we, in many religions and faiths or customs have uh, statements similar to the one with which we are familiar of do unto others that which we would have others do unto us. And uh, I like the thought that was added to that by a wag some years ago, we said, and do it first. That is, we don't repeat something that uh, for us uh, to do to others simply because they have done something for us. We do it, in fact, unsolicited. And we must do good uh, to God himself by loving and serving him and by loving and serving our neighbours. Which brings us back just to the original sentences we had heard from the scriptures. No one can hurt you if you do what is right. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And learning from St. Paul of the true God and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we believe what is true. We speak what is right or truth with kindness. And we do what is good. And may the God help you to do it. Amen. Lord God Almighty, who rulest the nations of the earth, we humbly beseech thee with thy favor to behold our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, that in all things she may be led by thy guidance and protected by thy power. We pray thee also to bless all the royal family, Endue with wisdom the Governor General, the Lieutenant Governors of the Provinces, the Legislators of the Commonwealth, and all who are set in authority, that all things may be so ordered and settled by their endeavours upon the best and surest foundations, that peace and happiness, truth and justice, religion and piety, may be established among us for all generations, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray especially today for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Linda, the primate,
primate of the Anglican Church of Canada, Greg, our Archbishop. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray together for St. Michael Canmore and their clergy, the Reverend Howard Thornton, Sean Crossert, and Elizabeth Short. In our companion diocese of the Windward Islands, we pray for St. Paul Kaliiqua and St. John Belair and their clergy. Canon Ashton Francis and Bishop Leopold Friday. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee. Pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all humankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of people, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in body, mind, or estate. We pray especially for Marcus in his continuing journey of discernment. We pray for members of our parish family, Dawn and Matthew, Andrew, Cheryl, Alan, and Alice, Lauren. We pray also for those in need of God's healing gifts, remembering especially Michelle, Helen, Marion, Will, Sonia, Dean, Sandra, Elizabeth, Mrs. Rupel, Glenn and Bev, Allison, Sarah, Peter, Frank, Jeff, and Joyce. We pray also for those who are living in extended care facilities and their staff. That it may please thee, O God, to comfort and relieve them according to their necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of their affliction. And this we beg, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts yearning for your comfort and your grace. In the midst of COVID-19 spreading across the globe, we ask in your mercy that you would bring an end to this plague and restore harmony and health to the nation. We thank you for all those who have dedicated their lives to serving our community, for health workers, doctors, nurses, paramedics, and especially those who labor in laboratories seeking a vaccine for this virus. Give them wisdom, skill, and patience in their work, and by your grace, give them success in their endeavors. 
We also pray for those who govern us, for our Prime Minister, the Premiers, for their courageous leadership and national cooperation across provinces and territories. Grant them wisdom in their decisions as they navigate the threats to lives and livelihoods. We also pray for our police force, our emergency services, and all to who seek to maintain order in our country. May all respect their work, accept the limitations in our freedoms, and seek the welfare of others for the good of all. And we pray for ourselves and our families, especially those who have lost loved ones to this disease or those suffering from its, its effects. May we know the peace that passes understanding as we place our trust in Jesus, in whose powerful name we pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness, and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, Thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting.
Let us all join together in saying the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore.